They shouldn't have given you Ashy Blokes YouTube. <laughs> Hey folks, real quick, I uh, noticed something when I was uh, perusing the internet and doing what I normally do, my daily uh, searches. Um, I actually ran across a, uh, actually an article printed back in 1911 about um, crime or the increase in crime uh, between the dates of 1880 and 1904. And something that kind of clicked in my head, uh, going back to the article that uh, Obsidian actually offered me, uh, I noticed that there was a a disconnect, or like I said, how people cherry pick ideas and cherry pick data. Because the the thing is, does poverty cause crime, and does poverty cause violent crime? And every time they talk about violent crime, they talk about murder. And in, any cop can tell you violent crime is more than just murder. Violent crime is armed robbery or violent crime is assault. My violent crime does it could be something less than murder. Or attempted murder is considered a violent crime, but we always look at homicide. We all look at the homicide rate. And Officer Charles Faulkner, I always tell you, everything is not uh, considered a homicide or actually put down as a homicide as far as the police department. So using homicide or the homicide statistics are not a good indicator of violent crime because there's other a lot more violent crimes than homicide. Homicide is the maximum, but there's a lot more uh, violent crimes that are less than that. So, the debate has been, does poverty cause violent crime? And in this, in the article in the Daily Beast that we keep referring back to, he says that the Depression of 1893 is one of the most striking uh, illustrations of discontinuity between economic conditions and violent crime. Not only did America's urban population soar in the 1890s, but the living conditions were, uh, were by contemporary measures, petri dishes for criminality. The new urban poor masses were poor, often desperately so. They were densely packed and appalling houses when not forced by impoverishment to sleep in the public uh, spaces or police station barracks. And we've get, well, I mean, I've read the article before. But what he was saying is that he kept using um, immigrants of uh, 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 one one particular area of New York City. One particular area of New York City. Despite these conditions, violent crime was relatively low. From 1890 to 1899, there were a total of 675 murders in New York City, which was less than there were a year in Gotham between 1970 and 1990. Now, the number of crimes or murders in eighteen in in, in uh, eighteen ninety or eighteen ninety nine and almost a hundred years later, when your population is almost like five times as higher, and there are a lot more weapons. And the conditions were different means something, but that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is something that I actually picked up. I'm going to boot it up in a minute. Let me pause this. 
Now this is uh, from, like, as you can see, the Judicial Journal of Criminal Law and Criminology. And the title is, Has Crime Increased in the United States Since 1890? And this actually was printed in 1911. I think that was the print date. And I will try to put the link in the description. Even though you can probably see the. Uh, the website right there. As I am reading the PDF, one thing I want to show you real quick. Is this table right here. As you can see, the table right here where the, the uh, actually is, these are prison sentence, census. First one is in 1880. And you can have, you see there's approximately 20,000, 19,000 prisoners in, in 1880. I should say in 1860. 1870. It's 22,000. Look, look at here in 1880. It went up to 58,000. In 1890s, 82,000. So as the population increased, as he says, And that's why they go through very, very specific periods, very, very specific periods. You see, the popula the, the prison population actually increased. Crime actually increased as the population went up. The crime actually increased. It didn't decrease. So the poverty you saw. Actually, there was actual an actual increase in crime, not a decrease in crime. And as we as you, as you can say, these are serious crimes. These aren't just pickpocketing or something like that. These are this is, these are serious prison crimes. Here's another one, another table that they put up. This is the uh, the statistics of major offenders serving sentences in the state prisons as follows. Another since 1880. 30,000. 1890. 45,000. 1895, which is a period that he talked about where he says that it leveled out 54,000. 1904, 59,000. These are major crimes. There is an increase. But this is something that I wanted to get to. Because he talks about New York and they always focus on, focus on murders. And the reason he focuses on New York is because there was a bigger crime wave in what they call the North Central, which is Chicago, which was actually bigger than it was in, or the bigger jump than it was in New York. So the spot he talks about, Chicago, in fact, they, you could actually track the Chicago uh, murderers. I might do that in another chart. Now, here's something that was interesting to me. Besides the tables. The well-known statistics of homicides collected by the Chicago Tribune from 1881 to the present time apparently corroborate this conclusion. While the Tribune statistics uh, have often been questioned to their accuracy, 
it may be stated that from 1892 onward, they show every evidence of accuracy. The number of homicides reported by the Tribune for the United States in 1892 was 6,971, which is 104 per, per million of the population. In 1895, the number had reached 10,500, which was 152 per million of the population. And in 1896, it was 10,652, which is 151 per million of the population. After that date, the ratio of homicides decreased rapidly. And in 1904, the number reported was 8,482, which was, again, 104 per, per million of population, around which number it had fluctuated since 1898. In other words, what Homeboy said in the article wasn't as referenced as it was supposed to be. And this is a peer reviewed journal that is actually disputing what the article said. In fact, uh, the author really didn't vet or give references or links to any of what he said in his article. There wasn't very many um, links or cross references or anything. Like I said, it was very, very much cherry pick data. And if I can find it, he can find it. And this is just murders. This isn't assaults. This isn't attempted murders. This is an armed robbery, armed robbery or, or a number of other things of which have already been illustrated that crime did increase during the period that he said that it did that it didn't I should say so like I said like I said you guys don't vet your articles you guys put evidence in that's not vetted or cross-checked or anything and you stand by stuff that's not cross-checked or anything I put in articles I don't just stand on one article I don't just stand on one chart because I, I know that on YouTube it's going to get questioned. If I make a claim or a theory, and I always said my stuff is theory, if I make a theory or I propose a theory, I always give you multiple sources. It's already, already cross-checked. It's already um, backed up not only with data, but also with real live articles, real live work, real live instances to actually bolster the argument everybody else doesn't do that but i know anything i say will be questioned you know person you know as a gemini motherfucking like me like, like me gemini's do not like to be wrong i will admit when i'm wrong and i will humble myself when i'm wrong but i don't like to be wrong so i try to put the very best work out there that i can so this will probably conclude my discussion of this so i'm gonna go take a shower and clean off the mud now unless you guys got something really really pertinent or something really really shocking which i have not seen i've seen a few tables here and there but you have nobody's giving me any clear clear evidence of anything to refute anything that I put forward. I have given articles. I have given articles that have live testimony. I have gone to the, you know, the World Economic Forum, which is the probably one of the foremost authorities in the world. It, it just is. And they put money behind their shit. When they say they do something, it's done. You know, they don't put stuff out there that's not done. I can tell you that about the World Economic Forum. They vet everything. They cross check everything because they got not only thousands of sources, but millions of sources because they get they get sources and statistics that nobody else can get. They get everything. And nobody has. So if they say poverty causes crime or you have to deal with poverty to prevent crime and there's ways ways to intervene to prevent not only crime, but violent crime. That means they've probably done the work, and they have. But 
this is all I'm going to do on this one. There's going to be other stuff that I'm going to put up because I'm behind on the all the other stuff while I've been down in the mud wrestling with people that have opinions and feelings instead of them doing the work. Because all it is is that all it is is a pissing contest because people want to be right because they feel that they're right. And some and stuff that I feel that I feel that I'm right, I don't put forth because I can't prove that shit. OK, and if I rant or I ramble, that means that's what I feel when I present something that's something that I found that I discovered. Now, there's the evidence. Go for it. This is BGS out and I'll see you guys on the next one.